Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Colin Talks Crypto. And today we're going to take an overview, a thousand foot overview look at the crypto markets. And as you're probably aware, you know, there's blood in the streets. People are losing their shirts. The price is going down. We have Bitcoin, 6,500. Bitcoin Cash, 611. Ethereum, 365. EOS right now at $5.80. So prices have been dropping. By the way, I'm looking at my laptop crypto app, which you can find at ColinTalksCrypto.com. Speaking of which, guys, check this out. Look at my shirt. This is Colin Tox Crypto's first t-shirt. Um, I'm not selling these. I don't know that there's even an interest. Maybe someday I will. But right now, I'll be sporting these and just kind of, you know, when I'm walking down the street, you know, people might check it out. Get a little crypto savvy. Start a conversation, you know. And that's what it's all about. It's all about spreading the good word about crypto. Um, makes it sound like some kind of a religion or something. But basically just getting the word out there, getting more people on board. You know, that's what we're doing. We're here to help others find financial freedom, which is what crypto offers all of us. And I think that's why we're interested. And so thank you for joining me. This is Colin Talks Crypto. Okay, guys, so I have prepared a few things for us today. First of all, I want to take a look at the word economics. So what does the word economics mean? I don't know if any of you have taken the time to look it up in a dictionary, but it says right here, this is the long one. It says, the study of the way in which money and goods are produced and used. And I was reading that yesterday, and I just thought that was funny because I don't think that I honestly would have cared anything about economics prior to cryptocurrency. Um, it wasn't on my radar. I don't think I was, I'd even had the awareness to pay attention to economics. Okay, so it's a study of the way in which money and goods are produced and used. I mean, who cares? You know, you work, you get your first job. You know, I didn't care about where my money came from or, you know, I didn't even know that it was being slowly devalued over time. So actually, I would say I didn't care about economics. But cryptocurrency actually brought to my radar the realization that not everything is all right in the world of economics because we have manipulation, we have inflation, we have Federal Reserve printing of money, we have all these things we've talked about many times. And once you realize that things like tax is just kind of a form of theft, and then not only are we being taxed as citizens of this country that we happen to be born in by chance, and sort of owned in a way. Not only are we taxed as citizens, you know, our hard work gets cut away. The money that we have and hold is devalued over time by inflation. So it's like there's two edges of a sword cutting at us both ways. You know, we're getting taxed directly. Okay, we send money every year to the IRS and to various places. And then behind our back, we're getting stabbed also by the printing of money, which is making that dollar that we worked for worth less over time, instead of holding its value, or maybe being worth more as in certain deflationary models that cryptocurrency can bring. And so I, I suddenly just, it just dawned upon me when I was reading this definition of economics that that's when I started to care. It's when I realized that not everything was all right. And, and suddenly, you know, it does matter how money and goods are produced and used. And it does matter how dollars and fiat are created and printed into existence because that affects me directly and it affects you directly. And I think that I would be safe to say that that's probably why a lot of us are here right now. We recognized, we became enlightened to the point where we realized, hey, this isn't cool. You know, you can't just take my money and it's okay. Like if you came up to me on the street and just tried to take my money, do you think I would be happy about it? You know, you can't just steal someone's money. Well, we're being stolen from. And that is the great ride that is crypto. And so anyways, I just thought that'd be a nice thousand foot view again just step back and look at why are we here what are we doing and again that's a very unifying view to me because no matter what cryptocurrency you're in in the whole we are all in this together to make the world a better place by freeing mankind and taking out all those middlemen that want to dip into our pockets you know you sign up with a bank account but then you get a, a late fee 
you have to pay a monthly fee because they're holding your money and we don't need people to hold our money. And that's the great innovation. Suddenly, cryptocurrency has enabled a system where you take out all the middlemen. There's no more need for people to be in the middle taking a cut out of our hard earned money. I can hold my own wallet. You can control your own money. We don't need people to tell us what we can and can't do with our money. And that is the freedom that crypto brings to us all. So if I was to summarize, I would say that crypto is the vehicle that frees man from the abuse of economics. So I just wanted to start off on that very thousand foot view note. Okay guys, so let's just take a quick look at the markets. This is where we're at today. As I said, Bitcoin's at about $6,500 right now. It's a new low for the last couple of months. I really like to check out the overall market cap when looking at crypto. And this is the current graph of, this was the December price spike, and here we are now. And you can see it is definitely on a correction. It is definitely bottoming out. It looks like we've tested the bottom about four times. And actually, we just kind of hit a new low right here. And you know, it's interesting because I, I probably have a different viewpoint than a lot of newcomers. Um, I find the bear markets kind of exciting and in a correction sense because I know that it's only going to go down so far. And I know that the lower it goes, the closer we are to the bottom and you know no one can tell you exactly where that bottom is and i should take a moment right here just to say that you know nothing that i say in this video or any of my videos is to be construed as financial advice i am not giving you guys financial advice i am just giving you my opinion on what i see in the market and i just want to make that very clear so make trading decisions based on your own best judgment um, not based on what i tell you to do i am not advising you in any way so anyways, yeah, it excites me to see the price go lower because I've seen this three or four times so far. I remember first watching the price shoot up to $255 and it was quite a rush. I remember actually watching it go up by $5 increments per day and I was showing my friends like, look at this, it's going up $5 every day. And then it hit 255, this was back in like March of 2013 and it finally peaked, the bubble popped and it crashed down. But of course it crashed to a new high and and then i watched it in december of 2013 just like six months later and it went up to 1150 dollars and that was just as exciting as the first time and then it crashed down to a new high and i started recognizing this pattern that many of you have probably seen where the price ramps up it gets steeper it peaks pops and crashes and corrects over a while and repeats, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. Well, I've seen this like four times. And after you see a pattern like this happen enough times, you start to get smart about it. And so it's like the, you know, if you've seen the meme of the guy on the roller coaster, the guy who's like, who's been through this for like six years, you know, he just rides the roller coaster in complete boredom versus the guy who's like fresh, you know, maybe he bought in December, he bought for $20,000 Bitcoin and now we're down to 6,500. And you know, and that's the guy who's like fucking going crazy because of all the volatility. Well, you learn to accept volatility as part of the market beast. And once you do, you can embrace it and you can get intelligent because you can look at past historical patterns and apply them to the current scene. And you can make some educated long-term trading decisions. And honestly, that's the only way I approach it. I really like to approach it on a broad view because I feel like the smaller time span you get into, the more difficult it is to easily, accurately predict the outcome. And my YouTube channel is only about two months old. And thank you guys very much for all your subscriptions to my channel. I really, really appreciate your support. My goal is to hit, you know, 100,000 subscribers in one year's time and then go from there. So thank you for your support very much. It means a lot. But if you remember, I made a video, and if you don't, please go check it out, about, I think it was about six weeks ago, about two months ago, and I went over my predictions for where we are currently in the market as compared to past patterns of bubbles and price spikes. And I still hold 100% to my belief. I feel like my prediction was more or less correct. And so actually what I'm gonna do right now is I'm just gonna play that clip for you of where I predicted where we are and where I think we're going, and I still feel the same way. So here it is. I did my best with that pink line to show what I'm saying there. I mean, there's the bowl shape. So let's take a look at where we are right now. I think that this bowl is starting like this. And if you draw a line through it, I think it's curving downward like this. So if we were to go to the other picture, I think that we are the equivalent of approximately here 
um, maybe we're here, I'm not sure exactly. So I predict that for the next four to eight months, approximately, we're gonna be relatively level in price. There'll be some ups, there'll be some downs. And then after that 48 months, I think we're gonna begin entering and climbing the next bull run. Um, it'll be a little while. I think that people who, who say that it's gonna go up right away are, are probably incorrect. I think they're being a little over enthusiastic um, just based on the past charts. I think it's going to take a little more time to balance out, level off, fully correct, and then I think we'll begin our ascent once again. So that's what I said about six to eight weeks ago, and I still hold true to that belief. I still feel like we are at that section of the chart where we're at the sideways movement going, you know, more or less even. The graph is never perfectly flat. You know, it's going to go up, it's going to go down. But I think we have several more months worth of sideways action to go here. I think we're through the worst part of the bear market. So if I was going to handle my money, I'd probably start acquiring. This is the acquisition phase. I'd start acquiring more crypto in preparation over the next few months for that future bull run, which is coming in, you know, eight months, 12 months. I don't know exactly, but it's coming and you want to be ready and you don't want to be the guy buying and FOMOing. You want to be the guy who already has that crypto under his belt, letting that rising tide carry your ship up with it. So when I look at the crypto price back in the day, of course, I would look at Bitcoin because Bitcoin was the only crypto back in 2013, 2014. It was by far the only crypto that the charts represented. Ethereum, I don't think even existed in the 2013, 2014 bubble. It came into existence later that next year. So you could just look at the chart of Bitcoin and have a good idea of the entirety of the crypto space. Well, it's not quite like that anymore. And so I like to look at the global charts of the total market capitalization. You can see this on coinmarketcap.com. And the reason I like to look at this is because it takes all crypto into account and we have so many of them and i want to look at the money where's the money flowing and then you know once you get that down you can then go into the microcosm of which crypto am i going to invest in and then you pick the most intelligent one and that seems to be a very personal choice what you know you feel has the greatest utility and to increase its value for mankind as a utility so in conjunction with this total market capitalization, there is an awesome site, and I want to share this with you guys. This is coinlib.io, and you might have to click on a few links to get to this exact screen here. This is the charts, but this shows the money flow, and I find this really interesting. And this is the explanation. If you've ever wondered why all the cryptos seem to go in unison, they seem to follow Bitcoin, this is the answer why. And I think that someday this will decouple, but for now, it is the case. So this is the money flow. This is fiat on the left side here. We have the US dollar, which is the majority of the fiat money coming into the crypto space. Right up with it though, is the Japanese yen. I actually was not aware that the Japanese yen was pumping that much money into crypto. I would have thought that the Chinese yuan would have been next. Basically, we have the US dollar and Japanese yen as the primary fiat currencies pumping into the system. And what are they pumping into? They're pumping into this, Bitcoin. Notice that they're not directly pumping into any of the other cryptos. I mean, very little they are. Like this little line right here is how much is going into Ethereum. We have $161 million going into Ethereum in the past 24 hours, but we have $5.1 billion going into Bitcoin. So for all intents and purposes, we can really ignore all these other cryptos as far as where the fiat's going. The fiat is going into Bitcoin, and that is why the market moves when Bitcoin moves. That is why your favorite crypto, whether it's EOS or Litecoin or Bitcoin Cash, all kind of mirror what Bitcoin does because that's where the money is onboarding into. So now let's zoom into this part of the picture. You scroll down and we have the money flow, the crypto flow of where the money's going from Bitcoin. And so we have Bitcoin and you can see that $385 million went into Ethereum just in the past 24 hours. And that's the most that there was. Next up is Bitcoin Cash, $184 million flowed from Bitcoin to Bitcoin Cash. Notice it did not flow from US dollars or Japanese yen into Bitcoin Cash. It flowed from Bitcoin to Bitcoin Cash. That's because Bitcoin is the grandfather, it is number one, and it has the most base trading pairs in all exchanges. You know, the one thing you can count on in almost any exchange is to have Bitcoin, BTC, being the base trading pair, coupled with 
your favorite cryptocurrency or altcoin or whatever you want to call it. Actually, I don't really like to use the word altcoins anymore. I think that a more fitting word is cryptocurrency because there's a lot of them out there. And some of them are smart contract platforms and things above and beyond just a currency. But um, yeah, the word altcoin perhaps was invented by maximalists who didn't want there to be other coins out there. Anyway, so you can see that this is the division of all the flow of money from Bitcoin into the altcoins. So that's the answer. If you were ever wondering why the market seems to all, all the graphs kind of look the same, it's because of that reason. Now, if we scroll down a little further, I'm going to break something down for you guys. This is just my opinion. This is how I look at it. Here's two charts, okay? So this is the top 20 cryptocurrencies by market cap, this top section. And the bottom section is the top 20 cryptocurrencies by 24 hour volume. So we have total market capitalization and we have trading volume down here. Now. If you'll notice, some of the positions of the currencies are different from the top to the bottom. For example, Ethereum is number two on the top graph. So by market cap, it's the second largest coin. But if we go down to volume, it's actually number three if you take others into consideration. So you'll see there's a swapped place here between the top and the bottom on Ethereum and others. So that would lead me to believe that and of course, others is referring to probably thousands of cryptocurrencies, but as a whole, they are increasing in value more rapidly than Ethereum is because the trading volume is higher. If Ethereum was having a higher trading volume, it would have been number two down here. So let's do another example, another very obvious example. Here's EOS, which is fifth place on CoinMarketCap. And here it is sitting here, fifth place. We're going to ignore the others. So it's one, two, three, four, five. And so where is it on the 24 hour volume? And consistently I see this, EOS is not fifth place. It's more like third place, if you take out the others. Third place on trading volume. And so if it's third place on trading volume, but it's only fifth place on the top 20 cryptocurrencies by market cap, that leads me to believe that it should be moving up. It should be moving up to the third place. If it consistently has this 24 hour trading volume, which is higher than its placement, that just means that this is delayed. This trading keeps happening. It's going to pump itself up. So I see Ethereum moving down a notch and I see EOS moving up two notches. So let's do another one. Let's look at Bitcoin Cash. So as you know, Bitcoin Cash currently is fourth place on coin market cap. One, two, three, four. And on the 24 hour trading volume, where is it? It's one, two, three, four. So that leads me to believe that Bitcoin Cash is not doing poorly. It's not doing super well. It's just staying level, which is pretty decent actually. But if you'll notice, EOS hops above it here where it was below it here. So again, that leads me to believe Bitcoin Cash is going to remain pretty much constant on its position on CoinMarketCap. But I do see EOS actually surpassing Bitcoin Cash in CoinMarketCap, assuming that the trading volume continues this way. Just an interesting point of view. I think that this is almost a way of fortune telling the future of what coin market caps top 10 cryptocurrencies are going to look like. Because if you see a coin come out of nowhere and it has a humongous trading volume, but it's way down here on the standings of coin market cap, I really strongly believe it's only a matter of time before that coin moves up the ranks and becomes a top performing coin. So I'd recommend keeping an eye on this chart. So based on what I see on this chart, EOS looks like a hot buy. Ethereum looks like a neutral buy. I think that, I don't know that I put a bunch of money in it. If I had to choose right now, I'd put it into EOS just based on this chart alone. So I think that Ethereum and Bitcoin Cash are a good safe haven for asset diversification. Bitcoin, it's good to be diversified into it just because the, as we discussed earlier, it is a base trading pair with every single currency not because I actually even believe in it. That's actually the one time I will violate my rule on making sure I believe in the technology I'm investing in because it is a base trading pair on every exchange and every cryptocurrency has a BTC trading pair, just about. And so um, I would hold some as a diversification because it is the grandfather and we just never know. You never know what's gonna happen. Let's just play devil's advocate here. Let's say that, you know, let's say that you don't like Bitcoin. You're, you're one of these guys like me who thinks that Bitcoin has kind of been taken in a bad direction and you don't believe in the Lightning Network. Well, you know what? It might not matter because in the end, who knows, maybe it'll get forked or maybe it will turn into something else. The thing with crypto is it's code and code can evolve, it can adapt, you can have new versions. And so who's to say that in 10 years, maybe the Lightning Network won't exist, but Bitcoin probably still will. 
and I don't want to have sold my Bitcoin because in 10 years, it may get back into good hands and it might be a good asset to hold once again. There's also the possibility it could be a completely crappy asset and that things like EOS, Bitcoin Cash, you know, Ethereum might all overtake Bitcoin in 10 years. That's a long way out to predict. But I just like to look at all possibilities. Okay, and let's do one more. So let's take, um, let's take Cardano. Now, based on these charts here, Cardano is, I think it's eighth place on CoinMarketCap. Let's just take a quick look there. Yes, eighth place. And so eighth place on position, but where is it by trading volume? I don't even see it. I think it's this orange square here. Yeah. So it's eighth place on CoinMarketCap, but it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13th place by trading volume. And to me, that is not a good indicator that actually I should probably sell my Cardano because it's not being traded. The volume is very, very low. And so that's a red flag. I hadn't actually noticed that until right in the middle of this video. So I'm going to take mental note of, of that.